This is a Black Nouveau Web exclusive. This is a second in a three-part interview with diversity One, trainer and human rights equality. activist Jane Elliott. Now, we, we often hear about reverse racism now. There's no such thing as reverse racism. There's no such thing as reverse racism. You can only be a racist if you have the power to institutionalize what you're doing to people who are different from you. What, you're call, what we're calling reverse racism is natural reaction to being treated unfairly on the basis of somebody else's ignorance. Now, don't ever let anybody say to you or about anyone around you that people don't like that person because of the color of their skin. That isn't the reason pe white people don't like people of color. They don't like people of color because they don't understand about skin color. And they don't understand that we all are descendants of somebody who looked like your mother. That's deep. Um, you, want, you don't really want to get me started on this. Because I, I do want to get you started. I'm really angry about what, how we are miseducating the American mind. And, and what, what I like the most about what you're doing in your exercises is that you come in with a very direct attitude. You even call yourself the B word. Well, but you see, the B word for me is the one that's most often used to refer to me. It used to bother me a lot. For me, the B word is an acronym for being in total control, honey. So and, and you want to call me that? Uh, it'll prove to me that you're out of control. And then I'll whip out my little Lorena Bobbitt fruit knife and take care of it for you. Go on. So is it necessary to strip away all of a white person's power? like in your exercises in order for them to see the light? Or is there another way it's to... Necess it's necessary to do what we do in offices and in the military and in schools and colleges and in hospitals and in community groups all the time. What we do is we become our parent ego. We go into our parent ego state and that forces all those we're working with into their child ego state. And if you watch our present so-called president, he spends most of his time either in his child or his parent ego state. He never gets into his adult ego state unless he's reading off the teleprompter. And he is such a poor reader that oftentimes he makes mistakes and then he is instantly in his child ego state right in front of your very eyes. It's absolutely fascinating to watch it happen. Speaking of our president, a lot of people say that racism has risen under, under him. Do you I mean, anybody who doesn't say that hasn't been paying attention. It absolutely has. I'm getting more hate mail now than I have gotten for years. The kinds of things that are being said in this country today are things that he has said for the last two years. He has said them publicly, and he got elected because he said them publicly. We have a group of people in the United States of America who were in response to eight years of a black man in the White House and the possibility that they might have from four to eight years of a woman in the White House will elect anything that walks and can chew gum at the same time. This, this, this last election, as far as I'm concerned, was a direct response to having a black man in the White House for eight years. And it's time to change the White House to the President's House. This is ridiculous to call the place where the President of the United States lives the White House. It, gives the, it sends the wrong message. It says, I remember when Richard Nixon said to a group of reporters, I'm trying to save the White House for you white people. That says it all. And at that moment I thought, well, wait a minute. Now this is something that has to be changed, and it has to be changed. Nothing can stop an idea whose time has come. It's time to change the name of the White House to the President's House or the President's Residence, which has a nice ring to it, don't you think? <laughs> okay, let's just say that Donald Trump, President Trump, is trying to bring the country together like he said he would do. He was, wait a second, he's trying to bring the country together. How would he go about doing that? And, and Resign. If he really wants to bring the country together, all he has to do is resign and take his, what do you call him, with him, the second in command, the vice president. That would bring the country together. But right now, the only way he can bring the country together is put somebody else in the president's office. He does not know how to be a president. He does not know what legislation is about. He does not know how to do this job. He didn't intend to get this job. And had it not been for the Electoral College, he wouldn't have this job. Mrs. Clinton won the popular vote. The only reason we have 
This person, as the President of the United States right now, is because the members of the Electoral College didn't do what that Electoral College was designed to do. Thomas Jefferson designed that to make sure that no one who was unfit for that office would ever be elected President of the United States. The Electoral College last year absolutely defeated that. With the state of the country being what it is right now, um, there's a lot of conversations taking place about, you know, let's have a conversation about race. How would a person go about having that conversation? What can they expect to happen in, in a conversation? Well, like the that? first thing they have to do is not talk about tolerance. I found out the day I was on the bottom in the blue-eyed, brown-eyed exercise with my students, I found out how it feels to be tolerated. I found out that tolerance means put up with or allow me to be. I don't need your allowance and I don't need to be tolerated. I want to be valued, recognized, and appreciated. Put your tolerance where the sun doesn't shine. I do not believe in tolerance because in this country we tolerate zits when we're little, zits when we're teenagers, hot flashes when we're old, and the flu and bad weather in between. We tolerate ugly things that are going to go away. I don't intend to tolerate anyone. I intend to recognize, appreciate, and value people, not to tolerate them. And I have all kinds of respect for the man who is part of the tolerance group in Atlanta, maybe. I have all kinds of respect for those folks, but we've got to change it from tolerance because the powerful can tolerate. The powerless have to wait to be tolerated. I have no time for that. I like that. No, I'm going to get lots of angry responses to that one. And I understand that, but I'm reading a book right now. Everybody needs to read this book. It's called, everybody has to read this. Everybody that's watching this has to read this book on tyranny. 20, 20 things that we've learned over the last hundred years in this country that have put us in the position we're in now and what we can do about it. Everybody has to read this book. They should read this book first and then they should read The Myth of Race by Robert Wald Sussman. And once you've read The Myth of Race, you will never, ever again go along with the idea that there are three or four or five different races. It was a lie made up by the people who ran the Spanish Inquisition. And before that, there were different colors, but there, there was, race had nothing to do. There, were, there, were, there was only one race, the human race. We made that whole thing up. It's time to get rid of it. We have the power to do that. This country got ready for World War II in about six months. And you're telling me that we can't destroy racism? White people created racism. Anything you create, you can destroy. God created human beings, the human race, and they started out black women. White people created racism. Human beings created racism. It's time to get over it. Uh, can we go back one second? <laughs> you, sure you can. You, you criticized President Trump did I? One thing that a lot of people have criticized President, former President Obama on was not speaking out on race enough. Do you think he failed in that? What if he had spoken out enough on race? Imagine what would have happened to him. The man is still alive. Do you remember Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.? Do you remember Malcolm X? Do you remember all those people have been killed not because of the color of their skin, but because of the fear of white people that someone who isn't white is going to look better, sound better, act better, do better than they do? Mr. Obama was the president of all of us. He wasn't just the president of black people. He was the president of all of us. The man who's there now is and claims to be the president of the people who look like him. When he says, make America great again, what he's really saying is, make America hate again. We'll continue this interview online next week.